Hey guys, Ryan Fields SPAC here. There's a lot of fun facts about babies that you may or may not know, like they're born knowing how to swim, their brain doubles in the first year, and they may even sleep with their eyes open. But we've got lots of facts that we're gonna dive deeper into today, and we're gonna touch five of them, and we're gonna dive into it right here and now. The first is their first poop. It's really black and really sticky. This is called meconium staining. And what happens is when the baby is in the womb, they drink the meconium fluid that they are swimming around in, and that gets into their system. And then finally, after they're born, all of that comes out, and it's really super thick and black and inky and sticky. It doesn't smell, so there's a good tip for you. But it's something to be aware of because if you're a new dad, like I was when I had first had my first of three kids, I didn't even know this was coming and it was super weird and scary for me. I thought there was something wrong with my kiddo, but it's not. It's totally normal and it will go away after about three to five days and then they'll get back into their normal process and normal system. So that is something to keep in mind as you're moving forward. But let's talk about number two, which are babies are born with reflexes that will eventually disappear as they start to get a little bit older. The one reflex that you're gonna notice right away is what's called the Moro reflex. The Moro reflex is basically a built-in protection system that they have for themselves. So if you are holding them kind of out like this and you move them up and down, you'll immediately see that their arms come out like this and they're trying to grab onto something. This is built in for if they were to fall out of mom's arms or something like that, their arms come out really stiff so that they can help to protect themselves and get caught if they start to fall a little bit easier. So you'll see that, you'll see them really freak out if you're holding them. Don't worry about it, it's just that moral reflex that's happening within their body and in their system so they can help to protect themselves. Number three, tummy time. Tummy time is absolutely crucial and it's crucial early on. You may think that this poor, cute little baby doesn't need to exert him or herself very much, but that's not necessarily true. As soon as you get your baby home, you will have the opportunity when mom is trying to take a nap, when mom is completely exhausted to spend some time with that kiddo. We're gonna talk a little bit more about how you can help with the sleep side a little bit later, but in particular, helping with tummy time will help your kiddo grow a lot of muscles in the back of their neck and so they can start to lift their head a little bit more. It will help them to crawl sooner and it will help them to walk earlier on. This is something that I absolutely loved doing with my three kiddos and it gives you a little bit of dad cred to be able to say to your other friends, hey look at my kiddo, he's already got his head up, he's already strong, he's already rocking and rolling in his little early on life. And it's absolutely something that's critical to you because you can spend some good time in quality time with your kiddo while helping them to get stronger in the same time and notion. Something to definitely think about. So tummy time, that's one that you can definitely work on as a dad in particular and really work on that early on. Number four, spit ups are completely normal. Your kiddo will spit up constantly and all over the place. Luckily it doesn't stink and it doesn't make too much of a mess. But when I had my first kiddo, Brahma, he's eight now, I had no idea what I was doing. So I would help to take the baby from mama and I would try to help burp. And that's one thing that you really wanna keep in mind is when they are nursing, whether it's nursing off of mom or off of a bottle, especially on a bottle, they're gonna take in a ton and a ton of air. And all that air is gonna get in their belly and then it's gonna bubble up and all that spit up's gonna come with it. I didn't have any burp cloths or towels or anything with me and I got that stuff everywhere. So it's something to definitely keep in mind. Whenever I would take that kiddo and I would work on the burping, I would always try to have a burp cloth on my shoulder every single time because you can just pretty much guarantee that they're gonna spit up on you. When you're talking about burping, kind of a side to this, don't feel like you have to be very gentle with your kiddo. Put him or her on your shoulder and give some pretty significant taps. You should hear a little bit of the bass, like a bass drum coming off of their back as you are burping them because you need to get all those bubbles working up through their esophagus so they can get that burp out. The better you burp them, the more comfortable they're gonna be, the less they're gonna cry, and the quicker they are going to get all of those out so they're not spitting up on you on times that you're not ready for it. So that's an absolutely good one too. Finally, number five, there's this weird coating 
that's on your kiddo's skin as soon as he or she is born. It's this white kind of waxy coating that is all over their skin and they're gonna look really weird. It's called the vernix. This is completely normal. Many babies when they're born, they're covered in that waxy substance and it protects their skin in the womb and it keeps them nice and protected. And especially when they come out, it helps to keep that skin from drying out quicker. So don't try to scrub it off. It will kind of come off naturally, but be aware of that. Your kid's gonna be squishy. They're going to be blue when they come out and they're gonna have this kind of white waxy substance on their skin. Totally, totally normal and something to definitely keep in mind. So those are the five new dad tips that I would have for you. But just as importantly, I'm gonna add one bonus for you and that is crying. Now, I hate to say this, Dad, but they cry a lot when they're a newborn, but that crying increases and will typically peak around six to eight weeks into this process. And as they get their voices a little bit better and more active and they can learn how to use it more, they are going to get louder and much more assertive when they're crying and trying to ask for things. So something to definitely keep in mind. But the good news is there's ways to control crying. There's ways to get your kiddo to calm down faster. And this is where you as a dad can really shine and take the edge off of your wife's challenges and also be that bad ass dad. So you can show these tips to other dads that are having babies. So here are four specific tips to help your kiddo cry less or stop crying when they have. And the first is what I call the shh motion. Essentially, what you think about it, when your kiddo was in mom's womb, it was really loud in there. You may not think so, but it was as loud as a vacuum cleaner inside that womb at all times of the day. So when they come out and they're in this silent environment, it's really jarring to them. So if you hold that kiddo nice and tight and then make that shh sound in their ears, directly in their ears, they'll get that feeling like they're back in the womb and they'll have an appreciation for that and they'll immediately start to calm down. While you're doing that shh motion, you can do the second thing, which is bounce them up and down. Shake them pretty hard. Obviously control their head really well, but shake them up and down. That feels like they're moving around in mama's belly so that they can feel more comfortable and they can help to fall asleep better. They love the movement. So when you're shushing and when you're shaking them up and down, again, holding their head nice and easy, that will really help to calm them down as well. The third thing from that perspective is pacifiers. Pacifiers are your friend. There's a lot of people that say, don't give babies a pacifier. It's gonna mess up their teeth. That's not true. That's not true at all, especially when they are one or younger or even two or younger. You can use that pacifier. It will help to calm them down. A lot of babies, my first kiddo absolutely needed that pacifier to calm down. And it was amazing the difference when even the nurse just gave a finger, a gloved finger to Bromley, our youngest, when he first was born, completely changed the game and he immediately calmed down. So if you're having challenges with that, try a pacifier and try a lot of different types of pacifiers. They may have a preference of one over the other. And then finally, swaddle. Swaddling is the key to get your kid to sleep longer when they're in their crib and for you and mom to get extra sleep as well. Make sure when you swaddle to go really nice and tight on that. And I'll post a link for some information about swaddling and different details for that in the description below. The tighter you do the swaddle, the more comforted they feel and the more they will not flail around and hit themselves in the head while they are sleeping. So do that shush, do that shaking, and then do the swaddle as well as the pacifier. That will help your kiddo to sleep a lot better. Final quick tip, when you're lifting your kiddo up, especially when you're doing that tummy time, don't lift your kiddo up from the shoulder blades while they are on their back because their neck isn't as strong as they are when they are on their belly. So always hold your kid, you can hold them in a football hold while they are on their belly. Um, but anytime they are on their back, really protect that head. So those are my tips for you. What did I miss? I know there's plenty of dads that are watching this that said, you missed this, you missed that. Put them in the description below. This is a community of dads like you and me so we can help do this fatherhood thing better together. Let me know what I missed. If you like this type of content, subscribe. Like this video, it will truly help the channel grow. And if you really wanna learn more about the 10 things that I wish I knew when I was a new dad, watch this this video right here it goes through all the details hope you have a good day good luck with that new baby talk to you soon thanks if you're a new dad you're probably really anxious and really nervous just like I was when I was in your position 
Here are 10 things that I wish a fellow dad would have told me when I was in your position. And each of them build on each other. So by the time you get to the end, you're going to have a dad's superpower to be able to move forward with that new baby. Without further ado, let's jump into it.